Today I'm super excited to introduce to you the Arduino Wi-Fi 2 library for both the ESP32 and the A266. It's a SPIFS-oriented, async web server-based Wi-Fi configuration tool and some more. It's a it's project that offer my good friend and business partner and I have been working on for the last few months. We found ourselves adding Wi-Fi, SPIFS, asynchronized web and OTA to each project we were making. So to make our life easy, we decided to create a library that will do just that. It was inspired by other really great Wi-Fi configuration tools that are out there. The most important feature we wanted to add was the option to save more than one router and password sets. Since we work at two locations at times, and we found ourselves having to change the Wi-Fi credentials each time. Also, wanted to have the option to upload that data in advance. I will cover on how we did it later. Now let me show you how it works. An ESP32 is connected on, on port 18 of the computer with a basic example code from the library. I'm going to hit reset so you can see what's happening. You can see the system is started. It's trying to connect to the Wi-Fi and it fails because it has no credentials. If it fails, the system runs the Wi-Fi model as an access point. This will be the address. And now if we we'll look in our, I'm going to pause this and I'm going to move the I'm going to move the clip to show you my networks. As you can see, I got a router here called config and I'm just going to connect to it and it's going to start the browser and redirect me to the main page of the Wi-Fi tool. How cool is that? In the Wi-Fi setup page, you can insert up to three sets of router and passwords. This is stored in a JSON file on the SPIF. The library is not secure in the file in any way, so be aware of that fact. Clicking on the Wi-Fi scan will return a list of routers around you. Once you hit save, the data will be saved on a JSON file and the ESP will reset and try to connect to the Wi-Fi with the new credentials. The OTA page allows you to upload and burn new pre-compiled binary framework file to the ASP directly from the web interface. Last but not least is the SPIF manager that allows you to browse the content of the SPIF, upload new files, delete unneeded ones. Just note one thing, if you delete one of the system files, the Wi-Fi tool might not work that well. Let's talk about installing and using this library. First, download the library from the Git and put it in your libraries folder in your sketchbook like here. The library has some dependencies and they are listed on the git. So download the rest of the needed libraries and place them as well in the libraries in your sketchbook location. One more important thing is the SPIF upload tool. In the git there is link for both the ESP8266 and the 32 SPIF file upload tool. Download them both and place them inside the tools library in your sketchbook location, same as here. They are both now available from the tools menu in the IDE. Note, this tool will not work if the serial monitor is open. Looking at the example, note that we got a data folder. In it, you will find all the system files that are needed to run the Wi-Fi tool. If you want to set the ESP credentials for the Wi-Fi before you upload the information, you can edit the secret JSON. Upload the file using the upload file tool. Then upload the code. Connect to the ESP access point, enter the Wi Fi information, and hit save. As you can see, the system is restarted and is trying to connect to the Wi Fi. It will fail on the first one and then tries the one we saved and we get an IP. Hooray! Let's go over the code a bit. We include the library and we set up an object for it. We have little to no settings at all. The reason again we wanted a fast tool to make our life simple and easy. In the example we begin the tool with auto run access point false. 
So if the SP was not able to connect to the Wi-Fi, it will not automatically run the access point. We then check if we got connected. The reason for that is to allow the user to take some action, like in our case, print a message to the serial and only then run the access point portal. Another useful command in the system is the run Wi-Fi portal, which allows you to run the portal on your local network as long as the Wi-Fi is, as long as the ESP is already connected to the Wi-Fi. In the ESP8266, we add a double reset detection as well, and it will force the access point to run with the portal. I hope this video will help you in the next project. If you haven't done it by now, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, and see you next time.